I am Radha Krishna, mathematics teacher. Today we are going to continue our topic parabola 6th lecture. First diameter of a parabola. What is diameter of a parabola? In a circle, if I ask you the question, what is the definition of diameter, you will say that it is a longest chord of the circle or some of you may say it is a line passing through the center of the circle, but both are wrong. Actually, the definition of diameter of any curve is like this. If you take a circle, the definition of diameter is the locus of the midpoints of system of parallel chords. If you draw chords parallel to each other to the circle and join their midpoints, this is the midpoint of this chord, this is the midpoint of this chord like this. If you join all such midpoints of the chords, the locus of the midpoints of parallel chords will be a straight line and that straight line passes through center. So, this is the definition of diameter of a circle. Similarly, in a parabola, if you take a chord of fixed slope or draw parallel chords, like this and join the midpoints of those chords. Then all those midpoints lie on a line, a straight line and that straight line will be parallel to the axis of the parabola. But how can you prove that that is the line and how can you prove that it is parallel to the x axis? Let us see. First take y square is equal to 4 a x. we can prove anything uh, related to parabola using the standard form. Take the parabola y square is equal to 4 a x. Now, let us consider a system of parallel chords having slope m, slope of each of the chord is equal to m. Okay. Then, if you join all the midpoints I am saying that it is a line parallel to the axis. Now, we are going to prove it. Let us take midpoint of one of the chords as p x 1 comma y 1. Then what is the equation of this chord? We have already proved that equation of the chord with point p x 1 y 1 is s 1 is equal to s 1 1. So, for this equation what is s 1 is equal to s 1 1? y y 1 minus 2 a into x plus x 1 is equal to y 1 square minus 4 a x 1 cancelling minus 2 a x minus 2 a x 1 you will get y y 1 minus 2 a x is equal to y 1 square minus 2 a x 1. This is equation of the chord with midpoint x 1 y 1. If the slope of this chord is fixed and equal to m, what is the slope of this line? Minus of x coefficient by y coefficient that is 2 a by y 1 if it is equal to m, what will you get? Y, y1 is equal to 2a by m. 2a is constant, m is constant. Therefore, y1 is constant. Then, what is the locus of p? Locus of p is y is equal to 2a by m. How is this? 
it is a straight line y is equal to constant the line y is equal to constant will be parallel to the x axis okay in general in a general parabola this will be a line parallel to the axis of the parabola so it is proved that locus of the midpoints of system of parallel chords is a straight line and we also proved that that line is parallel to the axis of the parabola so for slope for uh, chords of fixed slope m the corresponding diameter is given by the equation y is equal to 2a by m okay the locus of the midpoints of parallel chords of a parabola is a straight line parallel to its axis it is called diameter now equation of the normal in our previous classes we have already discussed about equation of a tangent now we are going to discuss about equation of normal if you take a parabola and a point p at square 2 at on it this is tangent at this point what is the slope of the tangent 1 by t because the equation of the tangent is x minus ty plus at square is equal to 0 what is the slope 1 by t so if you draw a line perpendicular to this tangent passing through p it is called normal what will be the equation of the normal first it passes through at square to at slope of the normal will be minus t because slope of the tangent is 1 by t slope of the normal will be minus t because product of the slopes will be minus 1 so equation of the normal will be y minus 2 at is equal to slope minus t into x minus a t square we can write this as t x plus y is equal to a t cube plus 2 a t so this is the formula for equation of the normal but earlier in uh, tangent equation of the tangent at a point x1 comma y1 also we have studied what is it s1 is equal to 0 equation of this tangent is s1 is equal to 0 but equation of the normal in terms of x1 y1 is not a formula because we cannot put it in in the form of a notation we cannot write the equation of the normal in terms of s s1 s11 etc that is why we do not study the equation we do not discuss about the equation of the normal in terms of x1 y1 we have to remember the equation of the normal at a parametric point at square to at like this let us see the same point the equation of the normal at p of t to the parabola y square is equal to 4 ax is t x plus y is equal to at q plus 2 at if you want normal of the parabola x square is equal to 4 ay just you have to interchange x and y okay next point is if the line y is equal to mx plus c is a normal of the parabola y square is equal to 4 ax the condition is c is equal to minus am cube minus 2 am if this is a normal it should be in this form any normal <coughs> should be in this form parametrically because there will be one foot of the normal the foot of the normal should be on the parabola in the form of 80 square to 80 so any normal can be expressed parametrically in this form so if this is a normal then what is the slope of this line m m should be equal to slope of this normal minus t so we get c t is equal to minus m now if you compare the constant what is the constant c is equal to a t q plus 2 a t putting t is equal to minus m we get c is equal to minus a m cube minus 2 a m this is the condition for normal we have already studied the condition for tangency if this line is a tangent of the parabola c is equal to a by m is the condition 
similarly if this is line is a tangent of the parabola x square is equal to 4 a y the condition is c is equal to minus a m square. Similarly, the condition for normal is c is equal to minus a m cube minus 2 a m. If you substitute this c in this equation, you will get equation of the normal as y is equal to m x minus a m cube minus 2 a m. So, for any value of m, this line is a normal of this parabola y square is equal to 4 a x this is known as slope form of the normal of the parabola. Okay. We have st also studied that slope form of the tangent is y is equal to m x plus a by m. Similarly, this is slope form of the normal. So, whenever you want to take the equation of a normal of the parabola y square is equal to 4 a x, you take either in parametric form or in slope form de depending on the question. Next, if this is a normal Suppose you want a point of contact, you want the point of contact. If this is a normal point of contact is 80 square to 80. If this is a normal, what is the point of contact? Taking t is equal to minus m, a m square comma minus 2 a m will be the foot of the normal. Next question, next point. The tangent at one end of a focal chord will be parallel to the normal at the other end. We have already discussed this point in the previous classes. If you take a parabola, let this be the focus, take any focal chord PQ. If you draw tangent at P, it will be parallel to normal at Q. I am just uh, repeating this point. I have already explained about the proof. Suppose this is t 1, this is t 2, t 1, t 2 is minus 1 since it is a focal chord. Slope of the <coughs> tangent is 1 by t 1 here. Here slope of the tangent, slope of the normal will be minus t 2, is it not? Minus t 2 will be equal to 1 by t 1. So, it is proved that this, this tangent is parallel to this normal. Okay. Next point, the length of the subnormal of a parabola is constant and equal to semi lattice rectum. You have already studied about subnormal of a para curve at a given point in first year applications of derivatives. I will just explain. Suppose there is a curve like this. At a point P, if you draw a normal to the curve, it intersects the x axis at n. Then the projection of P n on x axis, this part is called subnormal. This is for general curve. And the formula for length of the subnormal is mod y1 into dy by dx. You have studied all these things in applications of derivatives. Now, if you take a parabola, what is the length of the subnormal? Formula is y1 dy by dx. Now, I am drawing a parabola. Take a point P draw a subnormal, this is n. Now, subnormal is this length. This length is subnormal, it is given by y1 into dy by dx. Equation of the curve is y square is equal to 4 a x. Differentiating on both sides, you will get 2y dy by dx is equal to 4a. Therefore, y dy by dx is equal to 2a. So, if you take this point as p x 1 y 1, substituting p x 1 y 1, you will get y 1 dy by dx is 2a. 
it is constant independent of the point x 1 y 1. That means, length of the subnormal is always a constant and equal to 2 a. What is 2 a? Half of the lattice rectum, length of the lattice rectum is 4 a. So, length of the subnormal is 2 a, but you have to understand the subnormal for a general parabola as suppose coordinate axis are like this, a parabola is like this, then its axis will be like this. At a point P, what is the meaning of the statement? If you draw a normal to the parabola, the length of the projection of this normal on the axis of the parabola will be constant and equal to semi lattice rectum, you have to understand in the general case, okay, not on the x axis. Okay. Next point, the normal at any point P bisects the angle between the focal radius of P and the diameter through P. Just now we discussed about diameter of a parabola, you take a parabola like this, draw normal at a point P. this is a normal to the parabola at point P. Now, according to this point, this normal bisects the angle between focal radius of P, SP and the diameter through P. What is diameter through P? From P, draw a line parallel to the axis. This is diameter through P this normal bisects the angle between these two. Proof is very simple. You take P as a t square to a t, P of t, then what is the slope of the normal minus t? Slope of this like diameter is 0 because it is parallel to the x axis. You know the point a, a, s a comma 0. So, you can find the slope of s p using slope of sp and the slope you can find out tan theta where theta is this angle. Similarly, you find out tan of this angle, this is 0 slope is 0, this is slope is this slope is minus t. So, tan alpha is t, you find tan theta you will get t only that means theta is equal to alpha. So, it is proved that normal bisects the angle between S p and diameter through p that is given by this point. Next, reflection property. Take a point p, suppose a ray of light is sent through the focus, a ray of light travelling through the focus gets reflected from the parabola that means it strikes the parabola at P, then gets reflected. Gets reflected means what happens at P if you draw a tangent line and normal line if this angle is theta, then the reflected ray will move at the same angle with the normal. You all of you know the meaning of a reflection. Suppose a straight line gets reflected from the surface, then the reflected ray travels like this. Then this angle is equal to this angle or this angle is equal to this angle. So, this will be the reflected ray, but just now we discussed that <coughs> this normal bisects angle between S p and diameter through p. So, how will be the reflected ray? If a ray of light is sent through the focus, strikes the parabola at p and gets reflected, the reflected ray will travel parallel to the axis of the parabola. This is known as reflection property of the parabola. Similarly, if you draw 
if you take another line another ray of, ray of light passing through focus strikes the parabola here the reflected ray will travel like this take another ray of light like this strikes here travels parallel to axis that means if you keep a source of light at the focus then the rays of light emerging from the source of light after striking the parabola they will get reflected and reflected rays will travel parallel to the axis. This is the reason why the headlights of the dooms of the headlights of the vehicles will be made in the form of a paraboloid. If you revolve a parabola about its axis the surface formed is called paraboloid. Then the source of light that is bulb will be kept at the focus. So, what happens after reflection the light rays will travel parallel to the axis so that they fall on the road you will be able to see the load. This is the secret of the doom of uh, the headlights of the vehicles you can now, now observe. Similarly, if a ray of light travelling parallel to the axis strikes the parabola and gets reflected what happens after reflection the reflected ray passes through the focus same property because this is normal bisecting the angle between them. So, if a ray of light travelling parallel to the axis of the parabola strikes the parabola and gets reflected reflected ray passes through the focus this is called reflection property. the same points. Now, there are many more important points about the normal of a parabola. One of them is if the normal at p of t 1 meets the parabola y square is equal to 4 a x again at q of t 2 this is p of t 1 every normal meets the parabola again at another point except the axis of the parabola axis uh, axis of a parabola is normal at vertex this is vertex and you can easily observe that it is perpendicular to tangent at vertex at origin at vertex tangent at vertex is this and if you draw a perpendicular line it will be the axis. So, axis is a normal, but it does not meet the parabola at the second point except at the except the axis remaining all normals will definitely intersect the parabola at another point that is why every normal can be called as normal chord because it meets, meets at another point. Now, if the normal at p of t 1 meets the parabola again at q of t 2 then t 2 is equal to minus t 1 minus 2 by t 1 how this point is a t 1 square to a t 1 this point is a t 2 square to a t 2 already we have discussed about equation of a chord and slope of the chord what is the slope of the chord joining p and q it is 2 by 2 by t 1 plus t 2 slope of the chord joining p of t 1 and q of t 2 if it is a normal at p this slope should be equal to slope of the normal at p is what minus t 1 then taking reciprocal you will get t 1 plus t 2 is equal to minus 2 by t 1 then you will get t 2 is equal to minus t 1 minus 2 by t 1 all of you should remember this formula. Next next point is if the normal at p of t 1 and q of t 2 normals if the normals at p of t 1 
and q of t 2 intersect on the same parabola then t 1 t 2 is equal to 2. Let us take a parabola like this normal at p of t 1 and normal at q of t 2 intersect on the same parabola. Normal set p and q meet on the same parabola. Let us take this point as r. If two normals meet on the same parabola, then the product of the parameter c is minus uh, plus 2. Let us prove it. Let us take this point as r of t 3 because it lies on the parabola. According to the previous point, if the normal at t 1 meets the parabola again at t 3, then t 3 is equal to minus t 1 minus 2 by t 1 from the previous point. Similarly, if the normal at t 2 meets the parabola at t 3, then t 3 is equal to minus t 2 minus 2 by t 2. So, these two should be same. Subtracting, we get t 2 minus t 1 plus 2 by t 1, 2 by t 2 minus 2 by t 1 is 0. Then t 2 minus t 1 is equal to 2 into 2 into t 2 minus t 1 by t 1 t 2. Then t 2 minus t 1 can be cancelled because t 1 and t 2 are distinct points. Then what will you get? t 1 t 2 is equal to 2. So, it is proved. So, you should remember this point as well as this point related to normals of a parabola. Next point, the length of the shortest normal chord of the parabola y square is equal to 4 a x is 6 root 3 into a. Take a, norm, uh, take a parabola equation of the parabola is y square is equal to 4 a x. This point says that length of the shortest normal chord is 6 root 3 into a. If you draw a normal at p, it meets the parabola at q. As you change p, length of p q will be changing. Among all the lengths of p q, what is the uh, minimum value of p q? what is the length of the shortest normal chord? This point says the minimum value of the length S p is uh, p q is 6 root 3 into a. I will explain the method, you try to prove it. You take p as t, p of t, q as t dash, the parameter is t dash. If the normal at p meets the parabola again at q dash uh, t dash, then from the previous point t dash is equal to minus t minus 2 by t. Then length of p q should be minimum, when length of p q is minimum, p q square is also minimum. So, take p q square. If you apply distance formula, you will get a square into t minus t dash whole square into square root of sorry, into you will get t plus t dash whole square plus 4, you will get this, this, this just applying distance formula. Now, substituting t dash as minus t minus 2 by t, 
this whole thing RHS will be a function of t. When that function of t is minimum, then its derivative is 0, take it as f of t, find f dash t, when p q square is minimum, f dash t should be 0. If you solve the equation f dash t is equal to 0 completely, you will get t square is equal to 2. That calculation part I am not <coughs> doing because of limited time, we will not be able to complete calculations step by step. I am just explaining the method. You will get t square is equal to 2, you will get t is equal to plus or minus root 2. That means, the normal will have least length, the normal chord will have least length at 2 points. If you substitute t is equal to plus or minus root 2 here in the function f of t, you will get p q square, then if you calculate p q, you will get 6 root 3 into a. If the, if the length of the normal at p of t is shortest, then t is equal to plus or minus root 2. Okay. So, remember these two results. Here, if this normal has least length, automatically even if you reflect it about the x axis, if you reflect this p q about x axis, you will get like, like this. And if this is normal at uh, this point, if this will be normal at this point, if this is uh, having least length, this chord will also have least length. That is why two chords, normal, two normal chords will have least length. There are two points, one point here, one point here. For upper point, t is plus root 2. For lower point, this point will be t is equal to minus root 2. Okay. Let us proceed further. Co-normal points. Take a parabola and a point a point x1, comma y1. If you draw a tangent a normal at P, draw a normal at P. Let us suppose that it passes through a point x1, comma y1. What is the equation of the normal at P of t? It is T x plus y is equal to a t q plus 2 a t parametric form of the normal. If it passes through x 1 comma y 1, substitute x 1 comma y 1, you will get the equation like this. You can write it as a t cube plus 2 a minus x 1 into t minus y 1 is equal to 0. Here x 1 y 1 is fixed point, <coughs> a is constant, then this is a cubic equation in t. A cubic equation can have maximum 3 distinct real roots. Definitely this point, this t will be a root of this equation, but there will be two, there can be two more distinct real roots. That means, there will be two more points where the normals pass through x1 comma y1. See, from this point, we can draw one more normal like this and one more normal like this. Let this point be q of t2, let this point be p of t1, this point be q of t2, this point be r of t3. That means, maximum number of normals that can pass through a given point x1, y1 is 3 like this. Okay. Sometimes, depending on the position of this point x1, y1, this equation may have only one real root and two may be non-real. In that case, only one normal can be drawn. For example, if you take a point here, 
from the shape you can easily observe that only one normal can be drawn like this perpendicular to this curve. So, even if you move this move like this through P you cannot have another normal by observing the shape just visualize. So, in this case this equation will have only one real root and two non real roots. So, depending on the position of the point you can draw either one normal or three normals or sometimes two normals also. If this equation has three real roots in which two are equal to each other then total number of nor distinct normals will be two. But it does not mean that from points inside uh, if, a, if x 1 y 1 is inside the parabola we can draw three normals outside the parabola one normal that is not correct. There will be some points outside also where you can draw three normals and there will be some points inside also where you can draw only one normal. Okay. We will discuss about it later about finding how many normals can be drawn exactly through the point x 1 comma y 1. So, here if three normals can be drawn through the point x 1 y 1 let the feet of the normals be p q r with parameters t 1 t 2 t 3 then these three points are called co normal points. So, co normal points are feet of the normals drawn from a given point x 1 y 1. Now, if the normals at p of t 1, q of t 2, r of t 3 are concurrent at x 1 comma y 1 like this, then p q r are called co normal points of the parabola. Then this t 1, t 2, t 3 will be the roots of this cubic equation. Then what are the relations between t 1, t 2, t 3? Sum of the roots is t 1 plus t 2 plus t 3 is 0 because t cube t square coefficient is in this equation 0. What is the sum of the roots of the cubic equation? Minus of coefficient of t square by coefficient of t cube. So, you will get t 1 plus t 2 plus t 3 is equal to 0. Similarly, t 1 t 2 plus t 2 t 3 plus t 3 t 1 will be 2 a minus x 1 by a. Product of the roots is t 1 t 2 t 3 is equal to uh, minus of minus y 1 by a that is y 1 by a. Okay? You need to remember these 3 and from this you can observe one more point that is If you take centroid of the triangle PQR, centroid of the triangle PQR, what will be the y coordinate of the centroid? Y coordinate of the centroid is sum of the y coordinates by 3, but what are the y coordinates of PQR 2a t 1, 2a t 2, 2a t 3. So, so, y coordinate of the centroid is sum of the y coordinates by 3. If you take 2a common, you will get t 1 plus t 2 plus t 3 is 0. So, y coordinate of the centroid is 0. Then, if the y coordinate of a point is 0, the point lies on x axis. x axis means axis of the parabola. So, we observe that the centroid of the triangle formed by the co normal points lies on the axis of the parabola. In general parabola it lies on the axis, in this parabola it lies on the x axis. Next, the same previous <coughs> discussion instead of taking the parameters Let us consider three normals at PQR which pass through a point x1, comma y1. Normals at PQR are concurrent at x1, comma y1. 
let us take normal in slope form what is the slope form of the normal y is equal to mx minus am cube minus 2am if it passes through x1 comma y1 then substitute x1 y1 y is y1 is equal to mx1 minus am cube minus 2am then you will get a cubic equation am cube plus 2a minus x1 into m plus y1 is equal to 0. If the slopes of the concurrent normals are m1, m2, m3, then m1, m2, m3 are the roots of this equation. It is a cubic equation. If its roots are m1, m2, m3, what do you get? Relation between m1, m2, m3 is m1 plus m2 plus m3 is 0. Sum of the roots is 0 because m square coefficient is 0. Similarly, you will get m1, m2 plus m2, m3 plus m3, m1 and m1, m2, m3 they are given in the third point. Okay. So, sum of the slopes of three concurrent normals of a parabola is always 0. Next, only few more points are left in the theory. Chord of contact pole and polar. What is chord of contact of a parabola? We have already studied about chord of contact of a circle. If tangents are drawn from an external point, then the line joining the chord joining the points of contact is called chord of contact. Similarly, in parabola, take an external point P. From P, draw two tangents. then join the points of contact. Then this line is called chord of contact of this point with respect to the parabola. Hope you have understood what is the meaning of the chord of contact. Now, if the point is P x 1 y 1, equation of the parabola is s is equal to 0. The equation of the chord of contact is given by the formula s 1 is equal to 0. In circle, we have studied the same point. If a circle is here like this, if you draw two tangents from an external point p x 1 y 1, then this is called chord of contact of p. The equation, the formula for chord of contact is s 1 is equal to 0. I have already proved this in circle. You refer the notes. The proof is with the same steps. So, I am not going to prove it directly take the formula. Equation of the chord of contact of in a point a p x 1 y 1 is x 1 is equal to 0. Okay. Next, this is chord of contact. Equation of the chord of contact of p x 1 y 1 with respect to the parabola s is equal to 0 is s 1 is equal to 0. Next, a very very important concept that is pole and polar. I have already explained about pole and polar in the chapter circle. The concept and idea is totally same. I will once again explain briefly. Take a parabola, this is a given parabola and take a fixed line parabola and a fixed line. Now, draw tangents from points on this line to the parabola. This is one tangent, this is another tangent. Then, you will get a chord of contact. This is chord of contact of point P. Now, I will draw another chord of contact of some other point Q on this line. From Q, one tangent is like this 
another tangent comes like this. Now, the part of contact is this. Now, I am going to take one more point R, I will draw with another color. R is another point. From R, if you draw another tangent, you will get another chord of contact and you can observe that all these chords of contact are passing through a fixed point. See this fixed point. That means, chords of contact of points on a fixed line with respect to a parabola pass through a fixed point and this fixed point is called pole and this fixed line is called polar. Okay? Now, if the pole is x 1 comma y 1, then the equation of the polar is given by s 1 is equal to 0. You refer the notes of circle for, for this proof, proof is in the same steps, same lines. Okay. So, formula is polar of the point x 1 y 1 with respect to the uh, parabola s is equal to 0 is given by the line s 1 is equal to 0. Now, so I hope uh, you have understood the concept of pole and polar, but earlier we have studied that equation of the tangent at x 1 y 1 is s 1 is equal to 0, equation of the chord of contact is s 1 is equal to 0, but the equation of the polar is also s 1 is equal to 0. So, what can you understand from all these points? If the pole lies outside the circle, if the pole p is outside the circle, then polar is nothing but chord of contact of p, this is the polar of p if pole is outside. If the pole is on the curve, equation of the tangent is s 1 is equal to 0, equation of the polar is also s 1 is equal to 0. So, if the pole is on the parabola, then the polar coincides with the tangent at the pole. If the pole is inside, then polar will be a line which is non-intersecting like this. Okay. Now, let us move to next point. Polar of the focus, polar of x 1 y 1 is s 1 is equal to 0. Polar of the focus is the directrix. If you take standard parabola y square is equal to 4 a x, what is the focus a comma 0? Directrix is x plus a is equal to 0. We have already discussed about the properties. If you draw tangents from points on directrix, they will be perpendicular to each other and the corresponding uh, chord passes through the focus. We have already discussed this property. So, if you take points on the directrix, the chords of contact of points pass through the focus. Also, we have discussed that chords of, uh, if you draw tangents at the ends of the focal chord, they will intersect on the directrix. That is why polar of the focus is directrix and the pole of the directrix is the focus. Pole of the directrix is the focus. And one more, one more point, in 
in the earlier diagram by taking a fixed line we have identified the polar by construction by drawing the polar cords of contact and identifying the point of uh, concurrence. Similarly, we can define the polar with the help of pole. Suppose P is the pole, then how do you identify the polar? You draw different cords passing through P. Then draw tangents at the ends of each cord. All those tangents intersect on a fixed line. If you take cords passing through the pole, at the end points of the cords, if you draw tangents, the intersection points of those tangents lie on a fixed line. This fixed line is polar, P is pole. So, the polar can be defined as locus of the point of intersection of the tangents, locus of the point of intersection of tangents drawn at the ends of cords passing through cords passing through the pole P, through P draw a cord, draw tangents at the ends of the cord you will get intersection point. As this line is cord is moving, this point will be moving, this will be moving on a three fixed line, that fixed line is called polar, polar of P. So, definition of polar is locus of the point of intersection of the tangents drawn at the ends of cords passing through the pole P. Now, <coughs> If the pole is given, we have uh, given the formula for polar S1 is equal to 0. Similarly, if the equation of the polar is given, what is the formula for pole? The pole of the line Lx plus My plus n is equal to 0 with respect to the parabola y square is equal to 4ax is n by L comma minus 2am by L. How? If it is polar, assume that the pole is x 1 comma y 1, pole is x 1 comma y 1. Then equation of the polar will be given by s 1 is equal to 0. What is s 1 is equal to 0? y y 1 minus 2 a into x plus x 1 is equal to 0. This is s 1 is equal to 0. This is polar of p x 1 y 1, but polar is already given. Comparing this equation and this equation, comparing the coefficients, you will get x 1 comma y 1 as n by L comma minus 2 a m by L. So, that is the formula for pole of the line L x plus m y plus n is equal to 0. Next point, conjugate points. Suppose, P is a point, its polar will be some line like this. If this polar passes through some point Q, then automatically polar of Q, what is the polar of Q? Cord of contact, it, uh, it automatically passes through P. If the polar of P passes through Q, then polar of Q passes through P. Then P and Q are called conjugate points and their polars are called conjugate lines. Next, suppose this point is x 1 y 1, this point is x 2 y 2. If they are conjugate points, then polar of each line, each point passes through the other. What is the polar of x 1 y 1? s 1 is equal to 0, it passes through x 2 y 2. Substituting x 2 y 2 in s 1 is equal to 0, you will get s 1 2 is equal to 0. By substituting x 2 y 2 in the equation s 1 is equal to 0, you will get s 1 2 is equal to 0. So, this is the condition for conjugate points. 
Next is if two lines with equations like this are conjugate lines with respect to the parabola y square is equal to 4 ax, this is the condition. How do you get? Find the pole of any one of the lines. If they are conjugate lines, pole of each line should lie on the other line. What is the pole of this line? We have already discussed the formula for pole. Pole of this line is minus sorry n by l comma minus 2 a m by l, but line is like this. So, n 1 by l 1 minus 2 a m by m 1 by l 1. If this point, if this pole lies on this line, then they are conjugate lines. So, substitute this point in the second equation and simplify, you are going to get this condition. Okay. So, with this we have completed the theory points almost we have finished if uh, one or two points are left we will discuss in the theory uh, we will discuss during the problems now we are going to solve one or two problems today and uh, in two more classes we are completely going to solve only problems so that's why i have completed the theory complete theory today without without anything pending so, in the further classes we can concentrate only on problems. Let us take <coughs> a question, find the locus of the midpoints of normal chords of the parabola y square is equal to 4 a x. Take a normal chord, it will have a midpoint, take the midpoint as x 1 comma y 1 if you change the normal the midpoint will be changing it will trace one curve that curve is called locus of p locus of the midpoints of the normal chords how to find take p x1 y1 as midpoint of the chord then what is the formula for equation of the chord equation of the chord is S 1 is equal to S 1 1. What is S 1 is equal to S 1 1 for y square is equal to 4 a x y y 1 minus 2 a into x plus x 1 is equal to y 1 square minus 4 a x 1 4 x 4 a x 1 this is equation of the chord we can simplify and write it as 2 a x minus y 1 y y 1 plus y 1 square minus 2 a x 1 is equal to 0. This equation can be simplified. Now, it is a normal at some point, but equation of the normal should be in the form of t x plus y is equal to a t q plus 2 a t or you can slope, take slope form of the normal. So, if this is a normal, you can compare it with either parametric form or slope form. Comparing with T x plus y is equal to a t cube plus 2 a t. What happens? T x is equal to uh, uh, compare the coefficients t by 2a is equal to 1 by minus y1 is equal to minus of a t q plus 2a t by y1 square minus 2a x1 from first equation first 2 you will get y t is equal to minus 2 a by y 1. Now, 
equating this and this, you will get y 1 square minus 2 a x 1 is equal to y 1 into a t q plus 2 a t. Now, you can substitute t is equal to minus 2 a by y 1, you will get some relation between x 1 and y 1. Then replacing x 1 by x and y 1 by y, you will get some equation and that is going to be the locus of the point p, you finish the calculation part. Now, another question, find the shortest distance between the curves y square is equal to 4 x and x square plus y square minus 24 x plus 128 is equal to 0. If you want the shortest distance between any two curves, suppose this is a curve from a point P, you want shortest distance to this curve. See, you join this point and this point, this point and this point, this point and this point, this point and this point. If you observe, when will you get the distance shortest? If you move from P perpendicular to the curve, perpendicular to the curve means normal to the curve. So, what should be this point? This is the point Q where the normal passes through P. Suppose you want to find out shortest distance between two curves, then from any point on this curve, if you move, if you want to move on to the other curve, you should move normal to it. Similarly, from any point on this curve, if you want to come on to this curve, you should move normal to this. That means, if P Q is the shortest distance, then P Q is a common normal, it should be a normal to both the curves. So, this is the idea of finding shortest distance between any two curves, you should draw common normal. Now, in this question, one curve is parabola y square is equal to 4 x, 4 x, draw that parabola. This is y square is equal to 4 x. The other curve is a circle. What is its center? 0 comma 12. 0 comma 12 lies on y axis what is the radius of the circle root over g square means 12 square 144 minus g square plus f square minus c minus 128 how much radius is 4 so with uh, this point as center 4 units as radius take a circle like this now if you want to find the shortest distance, you should draw a common normal. Suppose this is the shortest distance, then it should be normal to both the curves. Suppose this point is P, this point is Q, then P Q is common normal. Normal of a circle passes through the center everyone knows. So, let us take P parametrically on this parabola, you can take P as t square comma 2 t, because a is 1, a t square to a t is t square comma 2 t. What is the equation of the normal? Normal is t x plus y is equal to a t q plus 2 a t is t q plus 2 t but this should be a normal of the circle also. So, it passes through 0 comma 12, substitute 0 comma 12, you will get 12 is equal to t cube plus 2 t. We can observe that t is equal to 2 is a root. For a cubic equation, usually we, we observe the root and write it, it will be a simple root like 2 t is equal to 2 or 1 or minus 1. 
and from the shape of the carus we can easily say that there are no more real roots there are no more real roots for this because if you change this normal will it be normal to both will any other normal of the circle be normal of the parabola just observe visualize there will not exist any other normal that means this equation will have only one real root that is t is equal to 2 so the point p is 4 comma 4 let c be the center of the circle then we want distance p q p q is equal to c p minus c q c p minus c q what is c p applying distance formula root over 4 minus 0 whole square 16 plus 4 minus 12 whole square 64 minus what is cq it is radius of the circle 4 this is root 80 means 4 root 5 minus 4 so finally we get the shortest distance as 4 into root 5 minus 1 this is the method of finding the shortest distance between two curves. So, time is up for today. So, that is it today and uh, we are going to solve questions in the further classes on parabola completely. Theory is finished. All of you should copy the theory points on a separate notes and uh, go through them thoroughly and come for the next class. Okay? Thanks for watching. See you in the next class.